One thing that puts most people off owning or buying a telescope like this is the big scary word coloration and I can assure you that it's no harder than adjusting the mirrors in a car. Hello my name is Jason welcome to my channel Small Optics and in this video we're going to be looking at that big scary word coloration and, uh, and I can assure you that there really isn't anything to be afraid of in uh, collimating a telescope like this. Um, you've probably heard a lot of horror stories on the internet about, oh, you, you have to call in it, collimate them, you know, every time you use them and, uh, you know, it's a regular thing and it's just simply not true. Yes, they do need collimating uh, occasionally. Uh, especially if you're going to be taking them out regularly in a car, say you're going to throw them in a boot of a car, uh, I'm talking about reflector telescopes, uh, and travel into darker skies or something like that over bumpy roads, then yeah, they're going to probably need a little bit of tweaking. And that's all they generally need, is a tiny bit of tweaking. Most people who uh, have got one of these type of telescopes say that you need one of these things. Uh, now this is a laser collimator. And as far as I'm concerned, these are useless, all right? Now, this is my opinion, all right? There's thousands upon thousands of people that do use these things. But let me just tell you one thing about these things. Laser collimators need collimating, okay? Don't think that you're going to buy a nice new shiny laser collimator and it's going to be all collimated because more than often they're not. And... Uh, and, and if you look at this one, I mean, this one doesn't even have uh, the ability to collimate it, okay? So, and I know this is out, I mean, this is out for absolute mile. Uh, so lasers lie, I could do an entire video on why I don't like these things. So, uh, for now, I'm going to put these to one side. Now the other method, and, and my preferred method, uh, the, it's not the one we're going to be using uh, today. Trust me, the one we're going to be doing today is the best method, as, again, my opinion. I've used it for years, and it's foolproof. Um, and that is a Cheshire eyepiece, or a Cheshire, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I haven't got one of them at hand at the moment, but they, they work very similar to, well sorry, they don't work very similar, they look similar to a laser collimator, uh, but they're not laser based, uh, they, they, they work purely on a crosshair principle, and uh, I mean I favour anything that's not laser based when it comes to uh, uh, collimating a telescope. Now, the method I use, and I've used for years, is the good old collimation cap. Uh, this is one I've made myself, uh, which you can do also, you don't have to buy these things. They do sometimes come provided with telescopes, uh, not very often, but they do come. Um, and I'll show you exactly how to make this, and the thing is, these can't lie, <laughs> okay? If this says it's wrong, it's wrong. Okay, so without further ado, let me just show you how to make one of these things. Now, the only thing you're going to need to make a collimation cap uh, well, a collimation cap like I've made one here, you don't have to make them like this. There's loads of different ways you can use them. Uh, a lot of people, well, they used to use old uh, film canisters. Uh, but <laughs> getting older one of them these days, you know, good luck. Um, but all I've done here is, this is an old barrel of an eyepiece. Yeah, of an old eyepiece I don't use, okay. Uh, and this is a dust cover. And that's basically it. That's a collimation cap. And all I've done with mine here is, th there's various ways of, of, of doing it, like I say, but this is just my preferred method, is, I don't know if the cameras could pick that up, I've actually got a shiny washer in there, can you see that? And the way you do that is just put a, a black piece of paper in there, uh, and then, uh, or, or, or some tin foil, if you just put tin foil in there, something shiny in there, reflective surface, and then place... Uh, this into there but glue this into place this is going to be a permanent sort of thing that you're going to use to collimate your telescope because you don't want this cap slipping out you know what I'm saying uh, believe me I've been there <laughs> got the broken mirror to prove it um, but yeah going back to why I put a little uh, washer in mine if you can see that that's all I've done I've, I've, I've painted this black at the bottom and then 
uh, place a little shiny washer in because that is it and it acts more like a target area uh, I use a star as a centre spot on my mirror and I just align uh, I'll get the star in the centre of that washer but like I say I'll show you how to use one of these things uh, in, in, in a short while if, uh, film or, or whatever in there and you've glued this into place the only other thing you've got to do is actually make a tiny pinhole uh, in the top bang center of the uh, collimation cap okay it's important that it is precisely in the center and you know there's various ways you can do that one of the easiest ways is just to draw around draw around it uh, on a piece of paper cut cut out the uh, the disc of the size there fold it into quarters undo it and you've got a perfect cross in the middle that you know x marks the spot if you like that's one way you can do it and just put literally a pinhole right the way through the top of the cap. Now if you've done all that, you've got yourself, in my opinion, one of the best collimators you can have. Now apart from tools to aid us in collimating, uh, or help us in collimating the telescope, the other best tool that you can have is your two eyeballs, okay? And they will tell you if something's wrong, all right? Just by simply looking in the focuser. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. We're gonna flash a picture up in a minute, okay? Of looking directly through the focuser. There's gonna be no eyepiece in, all right? And it's gonna be as if you're looking directly down your focusing tube, and I'll tell you exactly what you should be seeing. Now what we're looking for is concentric circles. Now if you look at the first circle, that's the bottom of the focuser tube, okay? The second circle, this is your secondary mirror. It looks like a circle because it's a 45 degree. And finally, the big white circle, that's the primary mirror being reflected back onto the secondary mirror. And as you can see, everything's even and concentric. Now. Also, make sure that you can see the three brackets that hold your primary mirror in place, okay? Now, if you can see all this, and you've got concentric circles, then you're pretty much where you need to be. If your mirror doesn't look like that, all right, now, it could be a combination of two things. It could be a primary mirror, which is your mirror, the big round one at the bottom, uh, or your secondary mirror that needs attention. But you always start by collimating and making sure that your secondary is in position, is, is in uh, collimation first. Okay? Now, if you go back to those pictures that I showed you earlier, um, by adjusting these three screws here, now your, again, your telescope may be slightly different. Okay? First, you want to slightly slacken off this center locking screw. Okay? And only very, very slightly. Now, this will make you be able to turn the uh, secondary to and fro like that okay and also you'll notice that it actually moves a little bit up down left and right like that now if you think of a, uh, a kind of like a milking stool that's on three legs that's exactly how both the primary and the secondary are positioned so usually just altering two of these um, screws usually gets you where you need to be as I explained earlier you just adjusting this secondary so you can see all your mirror brackets and, 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 the, and all the circles are totally concentric. That's where you want to start, by getting this one right first. Now once you've got this right, tighten that screw back up, just check it again. You may need to adjust it a little bit again and just tighten it up. Now once you've got this one set, it's very rare that you usually have to play around with this one. Okay, It's usually your primary that uh, becomes out of collimation. Now when it comes to adjusting this uh, primary mirror, okay, yours again will look, uh, probably look different to this, hopefully better than this. Why Skywatcher has included Philip head uh, collimation screws, I'll, I'll never know. But uh, what you'll find is, is uh, three of the screws are what's called locking screws and your other three screws are the adjustment screws. You'll usually find that the locking screws protrude out uh, a little higher than the uh, adjusting screws. And the first thing you want to do is, like, it, like, the sec like I said in the secondary uh, mirror adjustment, you generally only have to adjust 
two of these okay so just for now just slack it off two or I, well you can slack them all three off you know depending on how, how, how badly your uh, telescope is uh, out of collimation and with just slight adjustments of these three screws and uh, combined with the collimation cap which we'll look at in a minute uh, this is how we're going to adjust our primary mirror now now if you followed all the instructions so far and, and you've got your telescope looking something like in the picture um, then you're pretty much your second one is done and now we need to introduce the collimation cap to um, collimate up the primary mirror so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in and hopefully get a camera up to it to show you just how or what's going off um, when you actually come to use this thing Okay, a bit of a challenge, <laughs> filming through a pinhole, but let me just, well, I, the camera is now right up to the pinhole of my collimation cap, and I forgot to mention, do this in the daytime, okay, and you want to point your telescope towards a, an, an, a window, and get natural daylight shining in. Now, you can see why I chose a reflective washer in my collimation cap now. Let me just explain what you're looking at. As you can see, you've got the two main cross uh, sections though the spider that holds the secondary in all right now the big black circle that's the holder of the secondary mirror okay now we're going to go where we can actually see the collimation cap you can see my internal washer inside the cap now the star that you can see pretty much in the center is my center star in my mirror okay now I've deliberately put mine a little bit out of collimation just to show you what will happen or what it will look like now depending on what reflective surface you've used yours may be a circle okay and it may be best to just leave yours uh, as a shiny uh, surface just just play around with different materials and find which contrast best to suit your uh, center spot so what I'm going to do now is I'll just alter the uh, collimation screws at the bottom just to show you look how it will how it's going to look now if we just turn make sure we've got the right one there we go okay <laughs> bear with me there we go okay so altering one of the screws you can see now that the star is pretty much banging the center now and you see that and this is why collimation caps are so good because that can't lie okay if that wasn't in the center it means it's out of collimation it's as simple as that and this is how easy these things are to use now, if you've followed all the instructions this far, and you've uh, made sure that your telescope first of all looks like the picture I showed you, and then you've uh, used the collimation cap, that's it, you've cracked it. Uh, your telescope's in collimation. Now, there is one other test you can do, uh, that is you don't have to make anything at all, and that is what's called a star test. Now, the way you do this is take your telescope outside, obviously, on a, on a nice clear night, and uh, put, focus your telescope on a nice bright star, Vega or something like that, or whatever's in the sky of uh, that particular month. And you want to defocus the star. Now, what will happen is you'll get a picture something like this, okay? And what you should be seeing is those concentric circles again that we keep talking about, okay? Now, if you're getting a picture something like this, all right, then that means again that your primary mirror needs adjusting. Okay, now you can do this on site just simply with a, a star test by just altering the primary mirror exactly like I've showed you, uh, just so you're moving that uh, that center uh, circle spot, which is actually I should point out is your secondary mirror that you can see. That is that uh, dark spot. Okay, and get that in the center so you've got nice concentric circles and again your telescope's in collimation. Well, I really hope this video's uh, taken a bit of that mystery or even fear out of collimation for you. Like I said, there's nothing you can do wrong really. Um, I mean, that's what they're designed to do, they're designed to be adjusted. 
And if you just follow the instructions, you, you, you know, there's not a lot you can do wrong. There's been some help to you. Uh, just don't worry about it. You know, take your time with it and you'll get there. Until the next one, hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.